Hey everybody, it's Rory over at ansgear.com. We've got a new core, or I shouldn't say a core, a new valve to put into your gun right here. So this is the core ignition valve. Uh, so this is a replacement for the switch inside of your mechanical, like Etha 3, your Mac 170R. You can throw this in and what it does is it's going to allow full auto in your mech frame setup. There's no electronics, nothing like that. All we're doing is switching out. Uh, they're gonna call it a valve. I'm gonna call it the switch because that's the actual part in the bolt assembly that we're taking out and, and converting or changing. Um, but here it is. So there's four different colors. They're just different colors. They don't have uh, significance as to a different effect. There's just four different colors. We've got a teal, a gray, a red, and a gold. <coughs> we're gonna open up this uh, Etha 3 right here, this Mech Etha 3, and we're gonna put in this valve and show you just how easy it is to do. Um, and then um, show you how just simple it is to put it back together and show you what it does basically at that point right there. So uh, let's go ahead and pop this one open and throw this part in. It's simple to do, um, just takes a couple minutes. And if you're not talking, it takes even less time. So we're gonna pull our bolt out right here. We're gonna unscrew the can. We're gonna just take that off. So our bolt is in there too. So we've got our bolt in there. We've got our can. We're gonna put that there. We've got our bolt guide, which is this blue part right here. And our spool, which is the red part that runs all the way through. So we're gonna get all this stuff out right there. So if you've, um, ever broken this piece off of this piece, I broken is the wrong term. If you ever removed this piece from this piece, you might be able to do it by hand. If this is the first time you are taking this off of this, you'll probably need an adjustable wrench or something to do it. So there are two flat spots, one there and one there on the other side. Just gently put that on there and then break it free. Once you've broken it free, you should be able to do it by hand and just unscrew that. The less time the wrench spends on this, the less marks you'll get on it. It's not gonna hurt it or damage it in any way if you do put marks on it, but it'll keep it looking pretty. Once it's unscrewed, we can pull it out. Now the spring and the spring guide, they possibly will stay down inside there, or they'll come out with this, or the spring will come out and the guide will stay in there, or whatever. Just make sure that both parts the spring guide and the spring, you keep track of and know where they are. So with all these pieces out now, we're gonna reach in and we're gonna grab our switch, which is the blue piece you see down in there, and we're gonna pull it out. I use my pinky and put it in there and kind of push on it and pull it up to where I can see it right there. And then I can put my finger in there and kind of pull it up. I don't recommend using a pick if you can avoid it, if you are gonna use a pick, make sure that your pick is hooked through one of the holes here and you're pulling it up. We don't wanna scratch the inside of this because remember these O-rings that are on the spool here are gonna be inside there and they're gonna be sliding up and down in here. And so we don't want to um, put any gouges, any marks or anything in there to potentially cause it not to seal up. So we wanna make sure that we're getting that out clean and smooth. So again, if you are using a pick, just be very, very careful with that. I like to use my finger, it's not hard. You just put your pinky down in there and you can, sometimes you can get it and get it all the way out. But as long as you can get it up to the point where it's through the windows, then you can use your fingers and pull it the rest of the way out. Hey, look at that, that's stuck to it. If when you pull the switch out, this little piece plunger comes out, just put it back. This is the part of the plunger that actually pushes against your latch inside here and makes your latch go click, 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 click. So we definitely don't want to lose that piece. We want to put that back down inside there. At this point, it's just going back and reassembling it just with the different piece. Now, if we take this piece and look at it from the top, we can see where our difference is. And this one, you can see it right here. I'm going to put my finger on it right there. There's a little notch that's cut out of that. And we don't have that notch in the stock one right there. 
This notch is what allows the gun to continually cycle when you hold the trigger down and give you that full auto feeling or that full auto cycle um, without any electronics inside there. So we're gonna take this one and we're gonna put it in. I'm gonna steal a little bit of the lube off of here and put it on these O-rings. Make sure that when you put this piece in that you do properly lubricate this. Someone left a comment and said, oh, you don't, you're not lubing up your parts when you put them in there. I think that goes without saying that you should be lubing new parts when you put them in. These parts don't stay in these guns. They just get installed and then I pull them right out after the video is done. All right, so now that's down inside there. I'm gonna take our spool and our bolt guide. Almost put them in. We're going to put our spring into our spool and then our spring guide in there and then we can turn this upside down and just put this together and you do want this to go all the way together to where it stops if you feel like you can't do that by hand use your wrench and you just want to go until you feel it stop right there we do not need to crank it tight. Go to where we feel it stop, make sure that it is assembled, and we are good to go. Take our bolt and our can, screw it all together. Make sure our latch is up. Take our bolt and put it together. And that's it, we're done. That's all you need to do. Now we're gonna throw a tank on it and we're gonna shoot it. All right, so we've got our bottle off to the side here. Got a couple thousand PSI in it. We're gonna throw our tank on. Gas her up. I'm gonna take the uh, barrel off so I can put my hand over it and make it a little bit quieter. With semi-auto, if I just tap the trigger quickly, we've got our semi, but if I hold it down, and that's it. Just by switching out the switch, uh, but they're gonna call it the valve, this ignition valve allows us to get this full auto without having any electronics in there. If you just tap the trigger, you still get that semi-auto right there, or the single shot. But if you hold it down too long, you can get it to like half stroke a little bit or whatever. You're not gonna break paint or chop or anything like that. But you kind of just have to feel off on, off on, off on, and then you're set to go right there. So uh, the installation is easy. The effect is pretty dramatic, pretty cool right there. Like I said, three or four colors to choose from. We threw the red one inside there, but there's a gray, there's a teal, there's a gold, and the red one, brand new core ignition valves. They're available on the website. Order yours today through ansgear.com.